when I'm painting these, I get so much out of it versus my other painting. I mean, I get flooded with emotions and feelings and perspectives that I didn't have otherwise. And when I do the intuitive reading for the person afterwards, that I'm always surprised because sometimes I will cry. I've, I've cried quite a bit at a lot of these and I don't know why. I just start tearing up just the well of emotions that comes through. Uh, during the pandemic, during the pandemic, you know, we we're all sent home and we're working from home and we have all these video meetings. And during these video meetings, I started noticing that I would see patterns and colors and shapes whenever anybody talked. And I was just doodling them. And then when somebody else would talk, the colors, patterns and shapes would change. So I was like, oh, interesting. I didn't think much of it at the time. I was like, okay, whatever. That's, that's kind of cool. And then uh, a week or two later, when I was meditating, the thought just popped into me. It's like, hey, try painting these for somebody and call it a color code. And that's how it started. So when I did the first painting for somebody, you know, I got on, I got in line with them. I, I, this was all improvised in the moment too. I just did a little meditation with them for like a minute or two and then asked them questions, got the connection. And I was sketching while I'm doing this and all these images are flooding into me. And then after that, you know, we went our separate ways and I painted all these images and stuff because I found that when I tuned back into the person, it would just continue. So here's the part that I didn't expect to happen was while I was painting it, I was starting to get flooded with intuitive insights for the person, about the person, things for them to consider, uh, different ways, what the colors and shapes mean for them. And that was all new for me. And at the time I was like, what? the heck is going on? Can I trust what's happening? And so when I did the first painting for the person and I gave it to him and gave him, you know, the intuitive reading, it was all spot on. And that's pretty much how it started for me. Interesting. Were you spiritual at all before you started doing this? Yeah, I've been a long time meditator for many, many years. But I, I, you know, I'd have intuitive hits for things here and there, but nothing like this. I, and then I just started, started discovering the language of the way, you know, the universe talks is through your thoughts. So you attract certain thoughts to you. And I decided to start, you know, following, following those thoughts that, that have come to me, you know, out of the blue, those inspirations. And that was, yeah. it was an inspired act to do this. Yeah, it's interesting with the pandemic that it was such a period, unfortunate period, but at the same time, you created a lot of creative discoveries in people, a lot of awakening, I would say. It was all this online communication and people just, a lot of them decided to go uh, work from home or from different countries. A lot of people just used it to their own advantage, this uh, period of two years or whatever. Yeah, I think it gave us at least it gave me time to really listen, listen to other people and listen to what's going on in yourself. I mean, when this started happening and I've done more and more, uh, you know, I had to go through a lot of phases where I'd get this information and I'd be like, I don't want to mention this to this person. This is crazy because I never thought of myself having this ability. I mean, not the painting ability. I've, I've had that for a long time, but uh, the intuitive stuff that was, it's, was very uncomfortable, you know, yeah. bringing up somebody's father or something. And I'm like, where's this coming from? And I would push it aside. But if the same thoughts kept on bothering me, then I would, I would have to say something. For the most part, it's been, it's been accurate. So I'm just kind of going with it. So you can you some kind of psychic online at this point. One of those, I don't, I don't know how they call, how, I don't know how they call them in English. I forgot. When they, okay, so you are kind of fortune tellers. Okay, an artist fortune teller at this time. I don't know if I am, though. That's it. <laughs> That's just it. I, I haven't told anybody's fortune. Most of the stuff I've 
talked about has been like big things in their past or family members, things that may, they may consider that I'm being told or directions to like super consider. And a lot of the meanings of the, of the colors and shapes, because when I do these color codes, I'm not, I purposely do not paint objects, people, places, and things. It's all colors and shapes. And cause that's really what I see. And I see that as a twofold thing. One, there's none of that objects, shapes and stuff for your mind to latch onto and start spinning these stories. And it's just colors and shapes. So you yourself feel into them and you bring what comes up for you is what you're supposed to listen to. And it, it doesn't have any attached, uh, you know, objects like your mother or, <laughs> you know, uh, a tricycle you had as a kid like that. So basically you see the energy of the person, you see it in the images and colors. Now, did you ever see any dark energy, like a evil energy in a person? How do you paint that? No, I wouldn't say evil. I would say confused because sometimes I can't, because I've, over the years, I, I can tune, tune into it at certain times and sometimes it just pops in like when somebody was real strong energy and I have found people that are really confused and maybe in a dark spot yeah. places, there's a lot of angles in the, the shapes that I see a lot of sometimes squares on their sides and a lot of, a lot of really harsh angles in, cl in enclosed shapes. And I've kind of taken that as in like these, little blocks of belief systems that are enclosed and they're believing and they're not doing them any good. It's like a block of limited beliefs and they're carrying a bunch of them and they're all colliding with each other and they're making their lives miserable. Yeah. Confused. It's a very good, um, you know, instead of calling somebody evil is or bad person, it's better to think about them as confused because they are not aligned with the universal, with the source. Like you align yourself in meditation, they are not, and that creates a lot no, of they're confusion. Completely separate, and they're just acting on all this trauma. Is what I think it is. Now you mentioned that you see the information. What kind of information do you see? Uh, well, sometimes it's ad advice or perspectives they need to take. Some of the things, you know, there was one person I did one for, and I didn't tell them something because I just didn't think it was my place. And what it was, was I thought she was going to be getting a divorce and I didn't want to overstep because I didn't think that was my place to say that. But then like three months later, she says she's getting a divorce from her husband. So maybe I should have said something. I'm still glad that I didn't. Uh, but a lot of it's advice and not advice, a lot of perspectives, perspect, new perspectives to take in your life. It seems like most people are caught up in a certain identity that they have. That seems to be the common theme. And that identity is, is a block of, I see it as blocks of shapes of beliefs. Like, for instance, inspiration, when it hits you, it may be something wild. And it may be something really simple, like what to make for dinner. That's a simple one. You're inspired by something, what to make for dinner. But let's say it's something like huge in your life, life-changing. And you're like, wow, it hits you. And for those brief seconds or minutes, you're like, ah, relishing. And you think all these grand thoughts. Well, maybe this great thing will happen. Maybe that great thing will happen. And then it, and then what creeps in is all the reasoning and the you know, you're scared. Oh, that nobody does it like that. That's crazy. What will people think? And all that stuff is convincing you not to do it. But when it first blew up, it came into you. I really think you should follow that because it'll lead you. It will lead you in the right direction. But we all, we all have all these fears and that those fears are trying to keep a certain identity in you. Oh, I'm this certain way. I'm this I'm this mom or I'm this guy that doesn't do that stuff. It doesn't matter. It's like these identities are trying to like keep you. It's like the ego trying to keep you safe because that other stuff is unknown. And you come up with all these reasons and fears to not follow that inspiration. 
So that's the, the major theme that comes through these color codes. Yeah, I had a guest on my podcast, um, French gentleman, and he he sees people's ailments. I mean, see, sickness sees them all, sees it online, and he can manipulate the energy and the cure people. And I think yours is a little bit similar, but because you're an artist, you see that those energies, you know, as color codes, or it just expresses. Yeah. yeah. What's interesting about that is I, I will usually ask people after they've had their color code for a few months, and, you know, some people that have come to me are really spiritual themselves, and, and one person, you know, when he opened it up and he had it, he thought it was like a psychedelic experience. It it balanced his space. He looked at it before he meditated. And, you know, sometimes when I'm having these intuitive readings with the person afterwards, I get really emotional because a lot of stuff comes through. But what I was going to say is over this past, like, six months or about eight months of these previous color codes, what's been happening is as I'm painting it, you know, I'll, I'll do the initial painting and then I... I usually sleep on it and see it the next day if I pulled to like make some changes or, or something. But what I've been noticing is I am starting to see these, these strings of light colors coming off these paintings. And if they, they just disappeared, it feels like they're going into other dimensions. And I've noticed when that happens and it's at its maximum of doing that, I know it's time to stop and I don't have a pool to do it anymore. So each person, I don't know what it will do for the person, but what I've been told is it, it helps them, it balances them, it, it has a lot of meaning to them because of the things that I've said, and it, it holds a power to remind you of your, your greatest self beyond, you know, underneath all the conditioning and the, the, the tarnished viewpoints that we've had because of life is, you know, whatever junk we've been through, it really shapes you, but... I think the color codes are getting underneath that and showing you colors and shapes that will help balance you and your space and help you move forward. Okay, but how do we read these color codes that you paint? How can we how can we connect with this picture? I mean, you get a feeling from it because I may look at some random colors in the picture and say, I don't know, it doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good question. Uh, well, a lot of it is not thinking about it. It is feeling. Uh, you you feel the colors. And, and even if it's irritation, like, wow, this crazy guy did this color code and it's, what, what is this? I'm just looking at a patch of colors and shapes. This is ridiculous. Let that pass through you. Just feel. Constantly feel. And you know, some color codes are just meant to be looked at one way, the way I send it to you, like this way is up. And other color codes, the person can rotate it and in any direction. And there's what I've, what's come through is there's usually different reasons for that, is whenever you're going through a hard time or a difficult time at life, just rotate the color code. And I'm not saying it's going to fix everything by no means, but I'm going to say it's you're going to look at the color code with a new perspective. And as easy as it was to rotate that thing, just realize it's just as easy to rotate your perspective on whatever is in your life. And I won't claim that I know exactly what these color codes are doing. I just know from the feedback I'm getting that they are doing something for people. And most of the time, I just tell people to feel it. And, you know, you'll have a recording of the intuitive reading I give you to go back at stuff. And, you know, usually that is what sets in a lot of the meaning for the person is the things I'm saying. And because I really don't, I won't really, really remember what I said to the person after it's done. It just comes through me. Uh, but a lot of it is... It seems to be pretty good so far. I mean, how one reads it is just feeling it. I know that would be a little fake for some people because they, they really want to 
think things through. I, how, how do I get my mind around this? It's like you don't. You open your feelings up to feel it. Okay, so you you provide some kind of commentary to this picture or just a picture itself? No, what, what it will do is, what happens is I'll have a, a Zoom meeting with somebody and I'll walk them through a meditation and I'll ask them questions while I'm sketching. That's for me to get the connection. After that, we go our separate ways and I paint the painting. Once it's done, I mail it to the person. Once they get it, they open it up and we have another Zoom meeting where it's recorded and I go through the color code of what came through so they can look at it and see it and they can give me their thoughts before I actually tell them what's coming through and my th their thoughts after I tell them what's coming through. Uh, and that's usually how it's done. And I'll give them you know, like certain things, the certain color codes will tell them how to use it because some people are meditators and you can use it for certain meditations before you actually do a meditation. You know, stare at it for a few minutes. Okay, so we're going to have one more uh, interview after I uh, receive my uh, color code? Yes. Okay. How long it takes you to, to paint that, to create that uh, color code? It depends on the size. If someone gets a mini, like the one I did for you, it just takes a few hours, and then I sleep on it, and the next day I may work on it again for a half hour. But the bigger ones will take, and they're, the bigger ones are done in oil paintings, oil paint. So it could take up to a week to paint it, and then maybe another week to dry before I have it shipped out. But the, the smaller ones don't take much time at all. I can have them shipped out in a, in a day or two. Okay, do you get any orders? Do you get a lot of orders at this time? It comes in waves. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Right now is a slow period. And how usually people find out about you, about what you do? Do they go to your website? But they got to find out about your website somehow. Yeah, in my website, which I also have, I'm also on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook, which is basically my my website is is the hub of everything which is my last name chrisoja.com now these paintings that you create i saw on your website some beautiful ones those are just your art or those are all color codes uh i have both on there but a lot of it most of it is just my art but i have a section that is color codes you participate in some kind of art uh, galleries and competitions? I, I was in galleries in the past, but right now I'm, I'm just selling straight from my website and off the internet. So do you think this is kind of mission? Do you feel like you have to do this in your life? you feel like it's your life mission? Yeah, I think it's one of my life missions. And the reason why is when I'm painting these, I get so much out of it versus my other painting. I mean, I get flooded with emotions and feelings and perspectives that I didn't have otherwise. And when I do the intuitive reading for the person afterwards, that I'm always surprised because sometimes I will cry. I've, I've cried quite a bit at a lot of these, and I don't know why. I just start tearing up, just the well of emotions that comes through to tell somebody something. And a lot of the times it's stuff that I'm holding back because, you know, I, I still question what's coming through. Like, wow, I'm going to sound like an idiot. I don't even know this person, and I'm going to tell them about their child or, you know, you pick the subject. It's just this is coming out. And then when it does and it's a hit, I'm like, wow. And then one uh, color code I did for somebody, I we both dropped into a very like deep space when I was talking to them and it was magical. You know, I had my heart, my heart uh, chakra exploded with love and I was just all blissed out for a while. And I've never had that happen just painting so i'm just like wow this is this is a ticket this is something that i'm 
I feel that I'm here to do. This is one of the things I'm here to do is do these color codes and see where it takes me. Like say if somebody had a business and they, they wanted a color code based on their business, I could actually talk to them about their business and ask questions based on their business and get a, a download, if you will, of their business and the color code for their business. And I would suspect the same thing would happen when I would give the reading. It would all be based on the, the business and perspectives and things to consider and maybe look out for. And this is something that could, they could hang in their lobby or their office or what have you. So you have the preliminary hearing, reading when you meet the person online, and then you have the conversation after you created the color code, usually two. Yes, this is after they get it and they can see it in their hands and yeah. we go over it. And do you feel the same energy? You see, you see the same colors in both encounters or it's different? Because the person can open up to you differently in the second conversation. Yes, good question. So when I'm getting these patterns and colors, I will say it's not static. It's always moving and it's always changing. But I uh, take my artistic license and start consolidating some of it to the major themes I'm constantly seeing in the colors and patterns because there will be themes. And that's what I'll paint. And I'm intuitive intuitively guided to do the painting certain ways and uh i'm sure you know i haven't done a second one for somebody i've done a second one for myself and it's been different so i would assume if somebody did it like six months down the road it would be different but i don't know yeah because our emotions change you know during the day hundreds of times and the, the yeah. person changes too you can change during a month or two drastically you can be a different person depends on the situation depends on your life depends on what's happening in your life and your circumstances so you might get completely different color code next time you you paint it yes and i have done some for couples and like each one separately and I would like to do a third one for them that is them together. I have no idea how that would come out, but I think it would be really fun to try to do that. So what do you usually see in those readings? Let's say you created the color code. Do you create it with your mind? I, okay, you probably created with your feelings. You don't know exactly what you're painting. You just create what you feel at that point. I mean, what will usually come through is like, like when I talk to the person, I'm I'm sketching just the shapes I'm seeing. Yeah. And I'll start to see kind of a pattern of what's happening. Like, oh, it's moving from this side to this side, or it's not moving from this side to this side. It's radiating out. And I'll just get flashes of colors, like a lot of yellow, a lot of purple, a lot of blue, whatever. And as I'm painting it, like I'll just, usually throw down a big swash of the color that I'm seeing and then I will put shapes on top of it and as I'm doing it that's when it'll be like like there's too much yellow it'll just a thought will pop in that's not that person so then I will change it and then it'll be like oh that's more like it and then that's when start things start to flow through for the person like ask this person about this when you talk to them Ask this person about that. Or they need to do this. They need to consider this. They need to consider that. This color green represents this for them. This red represents this for them. That's what starts to come through. So how this color code, this painting, can help a person? How can this painting influence a person's life? I mean, you get it, you look at it, okay, it's nice, all these colors... It's a little bit random, colors move in different directions. But what does it do for me? What what kind of uh, benefits I'm going to get from this picture by having this picture? Good question. Uh, well, one of the biggest things I will say, and this may sound corny, but I paint it with such unconditional love and intention for the person. And that vibrating in your house, I think, has an effect. 
I mean, we all know how important intention is. I mean, I think you've had a meal made by somebody that loved you and how much better it tasted. So first of all, that. Second is when we talk and I explain to things about this color code to you, it's going to stick. And whenever you look at that painting, it's going to remind you of certain things that I've said. And those certain things that I've said are positive. And that's going to recirculate into your being every time you look at that. And it's going to actually make you reconsider certain things constantly. Every time you look at it, you'll get a little, even if it's for a half second, you get a little power juice of like, oh, hey, yeah, meeting purpose, intention right there constantly. And to get on the, you know, the, the kind of the woo-woo side, I personally think the colors and shapes that I see coming off it now and spreading and, and disappearing, which I think are other dimensions or spirit world or something, I think that is helping balance and probably helping balance and uh, helping people to get in more touch with their core self. Because that's what it that's what I believe it's starting it's helping you radiate, get closer to your core self without all the judgments and you know the trauma that we've all have. It, it's get, getting underneath that and, and spreading it out. Okay, so this picture is like it is alive. Let's say it has colors that come into the age of the of the picture, but in the other reality, in the spiritual reality, all this energy, all this uh, uh, Colors, they go on around it. I would say they go in spirals or around it. Actually, yeah. funny that you just mentioned the movement is I've had probably about half the people that I've done color codes for say they swear that it was moving out of the corner of their eye. What revelations people saw during the interview after they received the pictures? What they see something they never saw before? Uh, well, that's a good question. I would say maybe it's some of the perspectives that I've, I've given them and because I can't speak for them on that one, but I will say some of the perspectives that I give them that kind of like makes them think, oh, I wasn't looking at it that way. Oh, maybe that because, because I've had a, a gamut of, you know, one person who was kind of like my, it was the most in depth I've got into somebody. He, he said that it was like a psychedelic experience for him, you know, and it was cause he's done ayahuasca before and I've done ayahuasca before. And he said it was very much like an ayahuasca experience and he uses it to just go deeper into meditation. And he says it balances his whole space. So a lot of the things I tell people are usually, it's kind of like, uh, aha, I wasn't looking at it like that. And if you've had one of those that is really a really good one in your life, it could change your life direction, you know, like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm inspired or I want to do this now, or I wasn't even thinking about that. I'm going to go that way. And that whole thing can set up a chain reaction that will just completely change the rest of your life. But then also it might be a placebo effect. Maybe I'm not right here, I'm not sure, but I'm just telling you my 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 thoughts. No, absolutely. Hey, the placebo, <laughs> placebo effect is real and it's everything. That's yeah. the thing you kind of realize. It's like even when you're looking at any advertisement on anything and you read all the great <laughs> things about it. Oh, they list fifty things and you're like, was it the pill, or was it the thing that I read? That's what I thought about it, yeah. Like, for example, here, I live in Eastern Europe right now, and here, it's an orthodox religion. And uh, they, these priests, the orthodox priests, they use sacred water, just regular. I would say it's a water from, from a faucet, maybe. But they do some manipulation over the water, and then they spray that water over people, over a car. Somebody bought a new car. They say, okay, you're not going to get in a, any accident. I'm going to spray this with, a, with my uh, sacred water. You're going to pay $500 for this, but it's going to help you. And that's a placebo effect. You know, it actually kind of help the person because he say, you know what? My car is sacred now, and I'm going to be safe. And that helps him to be safe. 
The same thing with all this painting. It might be, I'm not saying, but it might be like that. You say, okay, this is my energy. Absolutely. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> it makes you think just now when you say placebo effect, isn't placebo effect just intention? Because you, you read like advertisements or the person you're talking about, the priest, he has these intentions and he's telling the person and he's listening to these intentions. So they take that in, they believe it and voila. Yeah. And you change your thinking and your perspective and it, and it works. You know, I don't know. I'm not sure about the placebo effect of pills, there is some kind of percentage that it works just like a regular pill. I'm not going to lie, I don't remember, but there is a percentage that yeah. it, it works just like a pill. I'm not sure, 30 or 40%, something like that. Yeah. I'm not sure. yeah. All right, Joe, what else should I ask you? Um, do you have anything? Well, let me ask you about my name of my show. I usually ask everybody. What's your definition of freedom? Freedom. I think it would be something along the lines of well, a few things. Not being hindered by your past. Being able to do and act on your inspiration without any past conditioning stopping you. The willing... The ability to choose, I think, is freedom. The ability to choose. Freedom of choice. <laughs> yeah, freedom of choice. Okay. How do you think you are helping the humanity with your work you do right now? Hmm. By helping people see a different perspective on their lives themselves, basically themselves, and in doing so, they could change. And once one person change, it trickles out. And, you know, if you can just change one person, your life was... Yeah, paying yeah. forward. Eh? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. One, it's a chain reaction, you know, the same with the, with the bad stuff here. Yeah, but you don't, have to, you don't have to affect millions of people and be on a pedestal and a podium. So this occupation, the painting, can you, are you able to make a good living with this or just like an artist? Because I'm a filmmaker, and I didn't make a lot of money doing a film. So, Well, I just <laughs> kind of started. Uh, when I first started doing it, the first few months when I had my first podcast, business was really good. It was booming. And see, I'm trying to also get into galleries and stuff as a, a hustle. But I know people that do certain similar things as me, and they're doing extremely well. So... I know it's possible, but I'm not quite there yet. You know, I'm just barely scraping by right now. Okay, so you're in the beginning of your journey right now. Yeah, yeah. I am proud to be with you in the beginning of your journey. We're gonna look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to look back and say, hey, Jordan, remember when we done that? Well, you oh, by the way, I did send you your color code. Oh, I you mailed it. I Thank mailed you. it. Thank you. Thank two days ago. And I'm going to say, I want to do another one. You're going to say, Sergey, it's $1 million this time. It's, you know, it's no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do that. All right. Uh, I think we spoke about the, yeah, uh, you'd like to, to leave any contacts here where people can contact you, how they can find about your work. I think we spoke about that, but you can uh, repeat that again if you like. Yeah. My email is joe at chrysoja. Dot com and that's my last name k r e s o j a which is also my website chrisoja dot com k r e s o j a dot com you can reach me and email me anything reach out to me and you want to know more information about it and if you want to have like a first introductory because we can have the first meeting and talk and after that you can decide if you want the color code or not. So while I was painting this, quite a few things came through, and one of them kept coming through constantly, but I'll get to that later. That was one of the things I didn't want to uh, talk to you about, but it was there. So whatever I say, take it, take what resonates, leave the rest, but I'm just going to tell you what came through and what's coming through as I look at it. Now, I want to talk about the black dots. A lot of people get confused and they think the black is uh, something mysterious, I mean, something evil or bad. 
it's actually the quite quite opposite. Black is uh, you without identity. It's the void. Think of it this way: if you had no identity, you're more flexible, and you could be anything. You could be good, bad, right, wrong. You're more apt to try anything and do anything. So with that, you have the first three tentacles, as you called them, coming down. They're kind of this uh, sage green, and there's a lot of gray around them. And the gray, for you, rep represents a lot of wisdom. And the wisdom went into the green, and it made this kind of sage green. And those tentacles are, are you growing in your life? Now, part of these things may have already happened or they're happening. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you my take on it. Like the first one coming down and then goes down to that red, the, the black the with the red the, on it. The one in the, from the right side, the first one. Okay. Not the top, the bottom one. Yeah, the bottom one. Mm -hmm. That was a, a certain part of you was growing to do something and uh, it could have been like a career career thing that you were trying when you were younger, but there's a lot of red around it and that was a lot of passion and excitement. And the, uh, the blackness was always trying to, uh, I'll just call it the void, was always trying to get you to stretch and grow while you were pursuing that. Okay. And there was a lot of intense action around it. Like, yes, I want to do this. And there's wisdom that was always flowing to you to do that. And you had a lot of hopes about money. And you had a lot of joy pursuing this, like immensely. And that brings me to the second one right after that, which it was. it's the same. You have the same theme. You, per, you kept on per, pursuing stuff with a lot of wisdom behind you and a lot of wisdom that you wanted to gain. But the second one was more about, it started to get you to question some certain things about life and spirituality. And you, you may not even been aware that you were doing it. You may have, but it was kind of a turning point in the sense that you were more apt to pursue this without, of course, we all want to make money. But that wasn't the complete driving force. The driving force for you was something else. It was like the love of the craft of, of doing what you, you want to do. And you absolutely loved it. But there was a uh, sort of a spark in you that was more interested in uh, other people, pursuing other people in a certain way. I don't know, investigating other people. Now the third one with the black dot that's kind of kind of in the middle but not quite that's where I tend to see you right now and the black the black dot also has other black dots now this is I'll just say it. I think this is what you're doing right now with your show and whatever else you're doing it's attracting other little black dots to you. And what that is, is they're, they are attracted to the information that you're putting out there. And that information that you're putting out there is getting them to question themselves, their lives, uh, how they think about things, changing their perspectives. And if you change in your perspective, you're changing your identity. And that black dot is all about changing your identity because if you realize that you have no identity, you're more malleable in this world when you have identities, if that makes any sense. And the whiteness is, it's an innocence, but don't think innocence as naive. This innocence is more like untainted and untarnished by by the accumulation of things that you've gotten over your life, like the way you think about things and whatnot. And you're, you're getting a lot of joy out of doing this. And one of the things that I talked about earlier that kept on coming through and it kept on coming through really strongly when I started painting this section was to consider this when uh, you're doing your show or anything else,
you told me that you did on documentaries. Well, what kept coming through was uh, to start. I'm just going to say the word start document, documenting yourself more and expressing like if you have a show that really resonates with you and uh, maybe talk about how it's changed your perspective, because that's going to attract more people because they want because they're going to relate because they're listening to it as you're listening to it. And if they hear somebody else talk about how it's changing them, it's probably going to attract them even more because they're like, wow, we're on this ride together. And it kept on saying, like, document yourself more, however you take that, and share what yourself is going through as well as your guest. Because I think that would be, uh, well, what came through was that's, that's very interesting to other people because you have lived an in interesting life and it's just going to expand even even greater. And you have a lot of yellow and this light gray. It's kind of like the central theme of this thing. And that is a lot of uh, lightness and joy. I mean, you're just going to expand more in joy as you keep doing what you're doing. And it's, it's going to invade most of your life if it hasn't already it's going to really start to invade most of your life and that's very attractive to people and i'll just repeat it again i know i sound like a broken record but if you really start expressing how uh, you feel and from what somebody says and how it maybe has changed you or it's making you consider that's going to be both beneficial for yourself and for your audience. Now, the one on the very top, it seems to be a, uh, a different color. There's a lot of blue around there, and that's, that's more, that's not your career. That's, that's just basically you going into yourself. It's uh, very deep thoughts deep contemplation but it's all centered around growth and when you get to the the black dot there's a lot of action and that action is going to be internal it's not going to be external uh whatever that represents for you and it's kind of the black is kind of swirling around and uh it's breaking off that's really your uh your locked identity that you've might have had in certain ways because we've all had locked identities like I'm this, I'm that. Yeah. I'm I'm a husband, I'm a you know, all that stuff. That starts to really loosen and it stretches you to be uh more things than you previously thought possible. And it's kind of connected to this corner over here, which is a lot of blue and light blue, and that's like big sky thinking for you and a lot of love and in the middle you kind of see this orange swervy line that's yeah. a lot of marrying marrying love and uh and your internal world together and that's going to be some sort of actions you take you're going to be a lot more malleable and it's going to be recognized by people close to you drastically and you're going to proceed more into into expressing love in any way, any way, shape, or form, and it it escalates all the way back to the top where it goes back into yellow. Now, the bottom corner where I haven't talked about, you have like this green little thing coming out. That's your... Uh, for you, that one represents money. And the more joy you bring into your life, the more money is going to flow. And it kind of reaches up and it goes across this little blue circle with the black dot in the middle. That completely crosses over your identity shifting and growing. And you have a lot of action there. A lot of, what's the best way to say this? really unimaginable events like things that you cannot predict and you cannot imagine 
will really start to unfold in your life. And you're going to have a lot of action, but it's not going to be like the action of your younger life or the uh, dedicated, passionate pursuits you may have had your whole life. It's going to be more of a, a softer action in the sense that there's not going to be as much mental act activity as in, I need to do this. I need to do this. It's just going to be like, I'm doing this. And it's going to be more free flowing because of that. Yeah. It's much more free flowing. It's going to feel really good. And you're going to have this, when I said that innocence again, that untarnishedness, it's going to be swirling with that. And it's going to, it gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. It's uh, oof. and that's going to come sooner than you think. But you have to be light about it, especially mentally, because whenever you start to get too uh, yeah too headstrong about it, it's going to slow it down. Yeah. In this top, the top back where I started on the, the top circle, you kind of have this purple and pink line going through. Next to the, like, the bright green. In the right type. That's type a, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the right. Mm -hmm. That's an inquisitiveness that you've had your whole life, and it's... An inquisitiveness in other people, because it's leaning towards that bluish and the teal side, and it's inquisitiveness towards money, growth, money and growth and happiness and the joy. So it's telling me to, to really uh, take care of that inquisitiveness, even if it is things that you may think are superficial, that inquisitiveness is what is kind of your driving force in what makes you so damn unique. And it's kind of like holding up all the uh, tentacles, per se. It's like pushing them out. It's, it's this inquisitiveness that is driving you. And to really like respect and honor that inquisitiveness. Now, most people's color codes, well, a lot of them, I think I told you this before, they're just meant to view it just straight up. Yours, when you get the painting, the real thing, in the back, you know, it's framed. It has some extra hangers on the sides so you can turn the painting in different directions. Okay. I suggest you do that to find like the direction that you like at the time. Okay. And and if it and if it gets stale and old and you want to look at it differently, just turn it. Just turn it a little bit. And the big thing that's really infused in your color code is to have joy in everything you do. I, I know that's kind of cliche, but because you have so much joy in yours, I, I haven't done one with this much yellow in it. And yeah, and the money's going to come because I can tell that's important in here. Yeah. Yeah, we live in this world where money is kind of important. Although I, yeah, at this point, I'm I'm fine. I mean, I off greed, as to say, you know, I have my own house here, and my bills are very low, so I don't. But um, are you finished? Can I talk to? You? Or do you just? No, yeah, I'm finished. To... I uh, yeah, you can ask anything yeah. you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk. I have. One. Well, <sighs> Joe, first of all, I want to tell you that. Um, I don't know how you got this, but it's like 100%. So, yeah, thank you for this, Joe. You, I don't know. You may be just, uh, uh, you know what I say, a charlatan? Charlatan, yes. That's <laughs> you, right. Yeah. <laughs> you may be a charlatan, but a good one. So I just want you to know I painted this with unconditional love, and it's always there in your house. I mean, thank sincerely. You. Only for the best of you. So, All right, my friend. Well, thank you very thank much you. for this. Thank you. And I will uh, try to do a nice podcast. We'll see how it's going to go. You know, you never know in this uh, 
I will, I'll do my best. Oh, hey, one thing, one yeah. thing before we leave. Uh, can I send somebody to as a suggested guest? Sure, send it to me, yeah. I'm not sure I'm going to interview, but send it to me. I'm going to, yeah. He's a friend of mine, and he's a channel, and he's absolutely amazing. Okay, what's his name? Uh, Gary Temple Bodley. Okay. I'll send you his... his send it to me, yeah. His, his channel... His channel site is called The Teachings of Joshua. Okay. And Teachings of I did a color code for him. And the color code I did for him was my big, like, coming out moment because yeah. I, I thought I was a charlatan and I thought he was going to start channeling when I talked to him and be like, hey, Joe, you're full of shit. <laughs> you know, I was. <laughs> <That's what> I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding with the charlatan because right now, like. No, I was scared shitless to it because I yeah. thought something was going to come through while I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah, because right now you can no, put any I, any combination of words that is that are AI programs. You just drop it there, and it gives yeah. you a picture. You know, and you say, I don't know, I, I can do that too if I want to, but this is real. You described everything. I mean, I I'm like almost a hundred percent. Thank you. Thank you very well, much, thank you, Joe. Sergey. All right, my friend. I'll Have talk to you later. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.